So in this way, we pray for the protection of the devotees. So especially at this particular time, we know one of our very prominent, very senior most devotee in our Krishna consciousness movement is, is not being in very good health and he needs our prayers. Of course, Srila Chattataka Swami Maharaj has not been in very good health and we pray for him and we pray for all the devotees who may be suffering some difficulties, it may be hell or it may be any other kind of problem. But we always pray to Lord Nishrinadev to kindly protect the devotees and to protect our Krishna consciousness movement. So, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the appearance of Lord Nishrinadev is described in the seventh canto. However, earlier than the seventh canto, in the fifth canto, it describes about the residents in different places in Jambadvi and how they pray to different incarnations of the Lord. So it's described how Prahlad Maharaj resides in one particular place there and he, along with all the residents in that place, they all worship Lord Nishrinadev. And there's a special prayer which they offer to Lord Nishrinadev. Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Namaskeja Sakeja Seya Vira Baba Vrajanaka Vrajadamsra Karmashraya Vrandaya Vrandaya Tamo Krishna Krishna Om Swaha Abhaya Abhaya Atmani Bhavishta Om Shon. The meaning is that Prahlad Maharaj and all the residents there in Hari Hamsa, they're praying to Lord Nishrinade. They pray, O oh my Lord Nishrinade, who possesses nails and teeth like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our demonic like desires for fruitive activities. Please appear in our heart and drive away our ignorance so that we might become fearless in our struggle for existence in this material world. So this prayer is very significant. I want to speak about some of the points in this verse to you this evening. On Wednesday, and also tomorrow, tomorrow we have a program at the Regent School, and on Wednesday, Cindy Hall will we'll have a program there in honor of the appearance of Lord Nishri today. And at that time, we will be speaking more about the pastimes and the appearance of Lord Nishri today. But this evening, I want to explain to you the significance of this prayer of Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj, of course, is one of the Mahajans. There are 12 Mahajans, or authorities, in the path of devotional service. Swayambhu, Narada Shambhu, Kopa, Koma Kapilomanu, Pralado Janako Bhishmo Balir Vayasaki Vayaya. So Prabhat Maharaj is one of the Mahajans, authorities. He knows the science of devotion. And we can learn how to worship and how to please the Lord by following the example of Prabhat Maharaj. So Prahlad Maharaj is very expert in rem 
remembering the world. If you read Sanatana Goswami's book, which is called Brihat Bhagavatamrita, he describes how Narada Muni was searching for devotees who had received the greatest mercy from the Lord. So he went to different people and at one point he had come to Prahlad because he was convinced that Prahlad must be the greatest devotee of the Lord. Why? Because the Lord appeared to protect him. The Lord saved him from the danger. His father, his demoniac father, was trying to kill him in so many ways. And finally, Lord Nishrindadev appeared and fought with Pallad's father and killed him. So, Narada Muni was saying to Pallad that you must be the greatest devotee of the Lord. But Pallad said, no, no. He said, I'm not a great devotee. He said, I only remember the Lord, but I don't serve Him. He said, the people who serve the Lord, they are much better than me. Prahlad said, all I do is I remember the Lord. When Prahlad, when his life was being threatened by his demoniac father, Prahlad did not pray to the Lord for protection. He just, it was his nature to always remember the Lord. Prahlad is the devotee of Lord Vishnu. And Lord Vishnu appears in many different forms. And in order to protect Prahlad, he appeared in the form of Narsimha. And there, there's a reason for that, why the Lord took this form, of course. The Lord had to come in a form which would meet all the different benedictions which Lord Brahma had given to Haranyakashipu. Haranyakashipu <coughs> had worshipped Lord Brahma to get benedictions. This very name, you can understand the mentality of this person, Haranyakashipu, why he is such a demon. Because he's very fond of two things. He likes gold, and he likes also a soft bed. <laughs> he likes to sleep. He likes to relax on a soft bed. And he's very attached to gold. So Haranya means gold and Kasipu means soft bed. This is the mentality. This is the thinking of a materialistic person, a demon. In Bhagavad Gita, there are two natures described. There is Daivi Sampat and Asuri Sampat. Daivi Sampat means the divine nature, the devotees. Prahlad is a devotee. He has a divine nature. His father, however, was a different kind of person. His father was an asura, a demon. He had a very different mentality. His father just wanted to conquer and enjoy the material world. He wanted to live forever. And he worshipped Lord Brahma to get benedictions like that. Of course, Lord Brahma told him, he said, I cannot give you immortality. Lord Brahma said, I am not immortal. I have to die. So I cannot give you something which I don't possess. 
Sovereignty Kashi Kudan asked for so many different conditions from Lord Brahma. He asked, I should not die in the day and I should not die in the night. So Lord Brahma said, All right. And then he said, I should not die on the land or in the water or in the air. So Lord Brahma said, All right. And he should, I should not be killed by any man or any animal or any demigod. So the Lord said, All right. But Brahma said, All right. He's giving these different benedictions. Different benedictions. Brahma said, All right. Yes. That us do. Meaning, I give, All right. I give you that benediction. But, Lord Vishnu or Lord Vishnu is more smarter than Aranyakashi and Lord Vishnu overcome all of these different conditions and ultimately he was able to kill Aranyakashi. Anyway, that's that's the story of the Lord Vishnu but the prayer of Prahlad Maharaj, which we want to talk to. Oh my Lord, the Shrinade, who possesses nails and teeth like thunderbolts. So Lord, the Shrinade is ferocious to those who are not devotees. When we see the form of Lord, the Shrinade, some people are frightened. But devotees worship this form of Lord, the to a devotee, it's a friendly form, but to those who are materialistic and asuras, then they are afraid because they feel threatened. We want to understand Lord Nishindade. He has nails and teeth like thunderbolts. He used his nails, ultimately, he used his nails to rip the chest of Haranyakashi. It's very fearful. He then took the intestines from Haranyakashi out from his belly and put them around his neck. Just like I have a garland here. So Haranyakashi also had a garland of intestines. He took the intestines from the belly of Arani Kashiko and put them around his neck. And then this way there was a lot of blood over the body of Lord Shunyadev. So this is frightening to materialistic people, to those who are in the bodily concept of life. It instills a lot of fear in people. But for the devotees, there's no fear. Rather, they feel love and devotion for Lord Nishindade. The example is given, just like a lion can be very fierce and ferocious, but the cubs, the cubs of the lion are not afraid of the lion. Because they know this is my mother or this is my father. They're not afraid of the, the lion. They take shelter of the lion. So the same way a devotee is not afraid of Lord Nashindati. Rather, we take shelter of Lord Nashindati. And Lord Nashindati protects the devotee. So the nails and the teeth of Lord Nishrinidhi are for ripping apart the demons, but not for the devotees. Those who are devotees, the Lord is pleased to see them. Just like after Lord Nishrinidhi killed Haranyakashi Pu, Lord Nishrinidhi was very angry he was very angry and no one could calm him down. Do you ever get like that? Do you get so angry? Nobody.
wanting to make you calm. You're so angry, you become so enraged, you're yelling, you're screaming, you shout. So Lord Hashem is very angry. I hope you don't get like that. You know, sometimes you know, get angry, people can be angry three days. You know, they're angry and they go to sleep, wake up, they're still angry. <laughs> Goes on. So, Lord Hashemite was very angry. Why was he angry? Because Haranya Kashipur in trying to kill Prahlad. And Prahlad was a devotee. He had taken shelter of the Lord. So Lord Hashemite was very angry to see this, this behavior of Haranya Kashipur. Harani Kashipu was saying, I'm going to cut your head off, Prahlad. And he was waving his sword and he was going to cut off the head of Prahlad. So Lord Nasrindade was very angry and he appeared and then he fought and killed Harani Kashipu. So Lord Nasrindade is very kind to his devotees. He always wants to protect his devotees. So all of us, we have to also take shelter of Lord Nishimhiti, especially if we're ever in any danger. Lord Nishimhiti also come, he also came in the Kali Yuga, just 500 years ago, Lord Nishimhide appeared in Mayapur, in the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. What happened was, there was a nasty person called the Chan Kazi. The Chan Kazi was the, the ruler, he was like the magistrate of this, of the Mayapur area, Mayapur district. And it happened that he came with his soldiers and they came to the home of Shiva Stakur and they told them, no more Kita. They, 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 had, they were, the Mohammedans were angry because the devotees were having Kita and making a lot of noise. So the Chankazi came with the soldiers and he told everyone, no more kirtan. And he, he was so angry, he took the Madanga, smashed it on the ground. And of course, 500 years ago, all the Madangas were clay. Clay, even 50 years ago, all the Madangas were clay. Nowadays, we get metal Madangas, Palestine and so many things. But in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were all clay, the very nice sound, the best sound, but easily broken. And the Chankasi came and threw the Madanga on the ground. And he warned them, no more Chaitanya. And so it happened, Lord Chaitanya he gathered all the people together and they protested and they marched and protest that we have to have Sankirtan. We're going to do Sankirtan. And the thousands and the lakhs of people, they all came and they all chanted and danced and they came to the home of the Chan Kasi. And the Chan Kasi was afraid. This was the day after the Chan Kazi had smashed the Madanga. So anyway, the Chan Kazi then became very fearful, but he came out and he met with Lord Chaitanya. And the two of them discussed together. And the Chan Kazi told Lord Chaitanya, he said that, I'm not going to stop saying the Chan anymore. And Lord Chaitanya said, oh, just yesterday you came and you 
told everybody, no more sacred time. But now you say, no problem, that we can all do sacred time. So what happened? What changed your mind? And the Chan Kazi said, I will tell you. And he opened this shirt. And when he opened this shirt, you could see on the chest of the Chan Kazi, there were big scratches right across the chest. Scratches which were not made by any human, but were made by a lion. And the Chan Kazi described how that night after he broke the Matanga, he said he went to sleep, but in the night, someone jumped on his chest and grabbed him by the neck and shook him and told him, if you ever break my Madanga again, I will rip you to shreds. And to show him what he meant, he took his claw and right across the chest. He gave his big scratches across the chest that the Chan has it. So this was Lord Nishringate who appeared to protect the devotees and to warn this Chan Kazi not to stop the Sankirtan and never to break the Madanga trunk. And the Chan Kazi told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I promise from this day on, I will never again, we will never again stop the Sankirtan. Not only will I not stop the Sankirtan, but my descendants in the future, all of my descendants, none of them will ever stop the sanctuary of the Vaishnavas. And if you go to Mayapur today, the Chankasi Samadhi is there. And it's a place visited by all the devotees. When we go to Mayapur, we see the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. And we also go to see the Samadhi of the Chan Kazi because he also became a devotee. He became a devotee and he never stopped the Sankirtan and even during the time of the partition of India when there was a lot of tension, no one in Mayapur ever stopped the Sankirtan. No one ever interfered with the Sankirtan. And the Chan Kazi Samadhi is there, and the Chan Kazi's nickname was Champa. So there's a big Champaka tree, and it's been growing there for 500 years. And beside that Champaka tree, there's a Neem tree, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is called Nima. So the two trees grow together, the Champaka tree and the Neem tree, one symbolizing Chankasi and the other symbolizing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Lord Nishimadeva appears in, in this age, Kali Yuga. He comes to protect the devotees. We want to understand how Prahlad prays. Who is it? What does it mean to be devotee? Prahlad Maharaj describes that he says to Lord Nishimadev, please vanquish our demonic-like desires for fruit, fruitive activities. Fruitive activities mean we do activities to gain, to get material gain. We want to enjoy money, we want to enjoy opulent living, luxury, comfort. We want to enjoy this. This is all in the category of fruitive activities. Where we want to enjoy the results of our work. Just like you come here to Dubai, you come to enjoy the results. You came to work, 
and you hope you can enjoy the results. But Prahlad Maharaj said, please Lord Nishrinidhi, vanquish our desire for demonic like desire, our demonic like desires for fruited activities. Prahlad Maharaj also prays like that. He prays that I don't want to get anything material from Lord Nishrindade. I'm not, a, I have not taken shelter of Lord Nishrindade just to get something. That is not pure devotion. Because even if I do get something, it will be temporary. It's not going to be lasting. Whatever you get, it will last a short time. You get some money, how long does it last? Very quickly, it's all gone, right? You get a nice car, how long does it last? Very soon, also becomes an old car. You may get position in the material world. You may get promotion. You may become a big manager. It is all temporary. It's not going to last. It's finished with the body. We have to understand the material things do not bring us any real happiness. Real happiness comes from the soul. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj prays, kindly vanquish our demonic life desires so that we can become fearless in this material world. In the material world, everyone is living with fear, eating, sleeping, and fearing. So there is 
no fear. There is no old age, there is no disease, and there is no death. Those things, old, old age, disease, and death are here in this world, the material world. But in the spiritual realm, there is none of these things. So Prahlad Maharaj is trying to enlighten all of us in the position of devotion to become surrendered, to take shelter of the Lord, to chant His holy name and to worship Him with devotion. How to do it? First is to hear. We have to hear about the Lord and His different pastimes. Just like this appearance of Lord Nishimiti, it is a lila, it's a pastime of the Lord. We have to hear and we have to understand why the Lord comes, His mission in coming into this world. So this is why we worship Lord Nishimiti. He can protect us, He can save us from all the miseries of the material world. We just have to call to Him to chant His name and to worship Him. Worship Him with devotion. Don't just only worship Him for material desires, but worship Him with pure love. That is why Prahlad is such a nice devotee, because he does not ask Lord Nishrinidhi for anything. He just has love, devotion for the Lord. Therefore, when Lord Nishrinidhi appeared, he put his hand on the head of Prahlad. Prahlad was only a young boy. Lord Nishrinidhi took his hand, his lotus hand, placed it on the head of Prahlad. He never puts his hand on the head of Lord Brahma or even Lakshmi. Lakshmi is the consort of Lord Nishrinidhi. But Lord Nishrinidhi never puts his hand on her head. But he put his hand on the head of Prahlad. And by the touch of Lord Nishimiri's hand, Prahlad was filled with spiritual knowledge. And he could offer wonderful prayers for the pleasure of Lord Nishimiri. Our duty is also to give pleasure to Lord Nishimiri. That is why we celebrate his appearance day. This Wednesday, you must try to attend the function. Otherwise, you can do it yourself in your own home. You can have a, if you have a picture of Lord Nishrinidhi, you can prepare some footsteps and offer them and chant the holy names of the Lord. This will give pleasure to Lord Nishrinidhi. And this will also give us a lot of benefit, spiritual benefit, that we can purify our heart. Because our hearts are dirty. Our hearts are full of ignorance. But by chanting the names of the Lord, and by worshiping the Lord, we can clean the heart. We can take out all the dirt, all the anger, all the lust, all the greed, all the bad things can be removed because we take shelter of the Lord. This is the benefit of worshipping Lord Nishimbele. So we encourage all of you, please 
try to remember this way of state, an auspicious day. Just like Krishna Janmashtami, we celebrate the appearance of Lord Krishna, so we also celebrate the appearance of Lord Nasringadi, one of the very important avatars of Lord Vishnu. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? Anyone? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, my name. Your child 
will never be harmed even by his enemies. Therefore, when the father was trying to kill him, he couldn't kill him because Narada Muni had promised. Even more powerful than the blessing of our Krishna is the blessing of the devotee. Lord Krishna likes to protect the words of his devotees. Because, so because Narada Muni had given that benediction, that blessing, therefore Lord Nishrinite kept that blessing. He wouldn't allow any harm to come. So that, that was, he was very angry. But that was only because of how they tried to treat Prahlada. Not that every day is pain, but when he has to fight with Harani Kashipu, that made him very pain. Maharaja. Yes? Maharaja, there was one question. Hare Krishna Maharaja. Well, Maharaja wanted to ask this question to you. She's in full service. Can you tell us any pastime of Shri Prabhupada, Prahalat Maharaj? After this mysterious pastime, but was he cursed by anyone? Was there any fight between Prahalat Maharaj and someone else? Is there any pastime in Bhagavad? You can have a good, good picture 
sensitivity we are accustomed to from higher core. We can have that picture here. Yes. requested him to bring back her father <coughs> and did he bring back the father or did he no, let her? No, Prabhupada didn't request him to bring back his father but he did request Lord Vrishnadeva that please don't let my father go to hell because he knew his father had tried to fight with Lord Vrishnadeva and he tried to kill Lord Vrishnadeva so he had been very offensive to devotees and to even Lord Vrishnadeva. But Lord Vrishnadeva told the last, oh, you don't have to worry, your father is not going to hell. He said, because you are a great, because Prahlad, you are a great devotee. And not only your father, but for many generations, both in the future and in the past. Your family members will all be liberated because you have appeared in their family. So they're all blessed by your presence in that line. So Lord Mishrini did talk to us like that. If you don't have to worry about your father, he's not going to hell. Because you're such a nice devotee and he's the father of his